Welcome to It's 420 Somewhere. Today we talk about New Jersey getting dispensaries and Utah maybe getting mushrooms. Okay, so first story is uh, out of New Jersey. So they had legalized marijuana starting in 2020 from a voting referendum during the election. Then some bills came around that kind of solidified that. And ever since then, we haven't gotten any dispensaries or any kind of retail stores opening up in the state. So things are like, everybody's like, what the heck, what's happening? Turns out it's been a long process getting everything approved. And what is the biggest barrier is making sure these medical marijuana retail places have enough product for the medical patients before then going to the public. So once that can be proven, then these places will get the licenses. And the governor has been asked about this in a um, radio interview just earlier this week. And he said that he's hoping that within weeks, there will be some dispensaries popping up in the state. And he said specifically, if I had to predict, I've said this before, but I mean this literally, I mean this literally in this case, I think we're within weeks. I would hope in March that you're going to see explicit movement on the medical dispensaries, some number of them being able to sell recreational. So uh, if you're in New Jersey, that's some really good news. Hopefully by the end of March, within a month, we should see some dispensaries opening up for you if you don't have a medical card. Although I'm sure, I mean, although I'm sure most actual smokers probably have gotten their medical card by now, but so th this idea of dispensaries is more for the, um, the tourists in the state. So if you live in the state, you know, you figured it out by now. So this doesn't attain to you. This attains more to maybe the people in Pennsylvania who want to go to the shore for the weekend and uh, a dispensary is now going to be open for the summer. So that's kind of cool. Second story is kind of um, unexpected, but Utah of all states has created a bill that now has unanimously passed the state Senate and the state house that would create a task force who uh, would look into the idea of psychedelics in the future, making sure that the studies and the research around it is solid enough for them to actually open up their own kind of legality around controlled substances like mushrooms and LSD. And this bill, although it's not actually legalizing psychedelics, it's the first step towards that. And it has, like I said before, it has passed sweepingly over both the, the House and the Senate and now is at the governor's desk. And uh, it, whether or not he's actually going to sign it, it doesn't even matter because it has enough votes on the side of the Senate that it has power to override a veto from the governor. So it, this will certainly pass. A task force will open up in Utah and maybe by the end of this year, we can see more um, legislation come out of the state that would potentially decriminalize psychedelics in the state, which, you know, of all states, that's a great state to have because they have by far the best national parks. Um, going to Moab and being able to have mushrooms legally on Moab sounds great. Uh, let's see, I mean, they have Park City. Park City is a beautiful little town in Utah. I love Utah. Utah's the best. So it would be really nice if they had uh, some mushrooms being legal there. Also, the next thing that they should do is get rid of their stupid like like 4.5% alcohol cap on their on their beer there. It's really annoying when you try to go to a grocery store and all you can get is like a like a really light beer. Uh, that's an issue for another day. Finally, we have a bill out of California that almost tackles the problem of too much taxes, but then kind of just overrides it completely. So there is a bill that was introduced. It's unsure whether or not this would have any kind of backing around it, but there's a bill that would take away the cultivation tax on marijuana in the state. However, in order to kind of balance that out, it would add another percentage point to the excise tax. So the excise tax would be something that would be taxed to people who are buying at a real retail store. The cultivation tax is a tax that is for um, wholesale growers. That cultivation tax is not being seen by customers at a dispensary. It is being seen by the growers of marijuana. So the customers are seeing now a higher excise tax. The problem around all of this is that it's trying to keep the same level of, of profit that California has been seeing from marijuana. And maybe that's 
in and of itself the actual issue here, which is that California is used to such a high level of profit from marijuana that anything that would kind of like ease the, the pain that these growers and even the customers are feeling would take away that profit from California. And I don't think lawmakers are willing to do that or are willing to get any of that profit taken down. So no real change is going to be affected until that sacrifice is made. So yes, this would help the growers. This would kind of maybe reduce prices on that end, but then it would keep the prices just as high with this excise tax being higher. And like the fact that we have 35%, 38% taxes on California weed is already absurd. And to get that even higher, to get that up to 40%, come on guys, which active smoker is going to keep buying up of, off a retail store when they can, can when they can save hundreds and hundreds of dollars each year by just going to something illicit. It's absurd. And this, that's the actual problem. But those are the three stories we have today. Um, it's New Music Friday. So what else, what came out today? Caroline is a band that I'm very excited about because they are this mainly instrumental band. They do a lot of post-rock stuff. It feels like early Mogwe. Mogwe? Mogwe. I've never said them out loud before. But it feels like early Mogwe in the in the sense of it being kind of like a building type of instrumental music with strings and it has a very optimistic um happy feel to it which is something that you don't typically get with post rock so it's a really really good album i suggest the first song to me is one of the best songs i've heard in a while dark blue um it's a really really awesome album it's self-titled caroline and that's kind of it for this week in terms of music and in terms of news so we'll be back next week with some more stuff see you then <coughs>